index futures, Aussie and Omi, how to trade, what are they, what are the processes around them. Multi-choice, there seems to be some mispricing happening, still no cabinet coalition, cabinet GNU thingy, we'll check in on our stocks. This is JC Direct, episode 593 for 27 June, my name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by Just One Lap. So let's first head over to uh, multi-choice. There seems to be some mispricing happening there, and I'm not quite sure what the story is. So the background simple, right? There's a 125 rand mandatory offer, which they upped uh, from Canal Plus to buy multi-choice, yet the stock's trading at 102 and change. Now, I get the point, is that Multitrace had some results out that were an absolute horror show. I mean, horror show of, of galoreness. And the, the company's technically insolvent. They've lost, what, eight, odd, eight or nine billion rand because of translation gains, i.e. currency moving against them over the last four or five years. A lot of really bad news there. But I've gone through this offer document, and i got to say, I can't find anything that gives Canal Plus the opportunity to walk away. There are some terms and conditions. Uh, and one of them is particularly on this limitations on foreign control of commercial broadcasting services. And they make the point that certain entities within multi-choice are subject to applicable laws uh, and there will need to be some... Uh, 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 there will need to be uh, some some restructuring happening, and they talk around this will be undertaken by multi choice group on or shortly before the closing date. The long stop date is April next year. That can be extended twice by Canal Plus by another six months, and again it can be extended by the agreement of both parties. But I think this deal is going to happen, which then raises the question. Surely at 102 rand, there's uh, some upside here in multi choice. You buy at 102, by April of next year, you get 125. That's uh, 20 plus rand. Uh, that's uh, call it 20% in 10 months. I mean, maybe it gets delayed out. Maybe that's the concern. But I got to say, I would expect the stock to be, clo- to be trading closer to the sort of 120 rand level, which it was back in uh, uh, May, but then the trading updates came and all of that and things just got very, very messy. So I am I am thinking that there might actually be some, some opportunity here and uh, yeah, maybe we should be having uh, a, a better look at it. Uh, we'll see. But I mean, at this point in time, I really do think that it, it's weird that there's such a, a, a giant disconnect in, 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 its, in, in a sense. It, it it, it should be trading so much closer. And, and yeah, your risk is you buy it and the deal doesn't happen, in which case, I mean, it is practically going. I mean, it, you're in trouble if the deal doesn't happen. You're almost back to, to zero in many regards. Make no mistake about that. There's not a lot attractive about multi-choice except that someone wants to buy it. A uh, quick update on some events that we've got coming up. Uh, ETFSA is doing a, an education exchange this Saturday, the 29th. Uh, we've got discount uh, coupons for uh, attending. It's webcast or live. You can choose. Uh, we've also got uh, Unlock the Power of Income Investing with One Invest ETFs. That date had to be moved into early July. And then on the 18th of July, building a defensive local and offshore income portfolio. Three important points there. Defensive income local and offshore. More information and booking, just one lap.com slash events. So we did our power hour last week, which was on trading as a side hustle. And go look at the video. It's a, I'm going to say it's a great video. I, I presented it. So of course I love it. Just one lap.com slash power hour if you want more in it. But I was also talking around, I touched a little bit on different products, and I particularly touched on trading index futures, and in particular, the Aussie and the Ormi, which I think are about the best thing to be trading out there. They, I, I trade uh, Aussie futures. I, they traded it at points. Uh, at this point in time, I, I do a trade early morning because it opens at 8.30 and runs to 5.30, uh, and then my equity markets from 9 to 5, of course. So there's that gap before equities open, And all I'm trying to do is find out who is winning the battle. There's buyers and sellers, and only one party can really be winning. And I just, I'm agnostic. I'm looking purely at price action and who is the winner. But firstly, what are we trading? We're trading indexes. 
as opposed to equity or commodities or currencies, which means that you are trading points, which is slightly different. So, for example, there's a seller right now at 75,553. If you buy that contract and it goes up to 73,653, you've made 100 points. And we've got the Aussie, which is the big contract, which is what we're looking at right now, and that makes you 10 rand a point. So you make a thousand points, you make so you make a hundred points, you make a thousand zar. Of course, you lose a hundred points, you lose a thousand zar. We've also then got the Omi, which is the mini version, which is one rand per point. So they are fundamentally different to the usual trading shares, where you buy a share at a hundred and two, and uh, Canal Plus gives you a hundred and twenty-five rand for it, and you've made yourself twenty-three rand in that process. Here you are trading points. You also are trading a futures. So this is 10 rand uh, per point. So 73,500 and change is 735,000 rand contract. If this contract goes to zero, you've lost a vast amount of money, unless you were short. Because, of course, you can go long and you can go short. You can trade both sides of the equation. Shorting, I just click here and I say, I want to sell that. Thank you very much. Pops up and now I can go and sell. And if it falls, I make a profit from it there. So that's the, the process of shorting. There's great liquidity uh, at this point in time. We've got a spread that's running at about 10 points. Sometimes in the days it's a little bit wider, particularly before open and after close, uh, and sometimes a little bit narrower. But a 10-point spread is really great. The trick is, how do you pay? Because you don't go and pay 735000 You pay margin. In other words, you put down a good faith deposit. Now, on the Aussie contracts, your margin is uh, 62,250 Rand per contract, which is quite chunky. Make no mistake about that. But the Ormi, which is a tenth the size, your margin is in 6,225 Rand. So it's significantly smaller. Uh, at Standard Bank, they charge a 150 time percent of margin. So you're actually paying 93,000 in change or 9,300. I'm trading at Standard Bank. This is Iris Viewpoint that I'm looking at right now. This is the standard online share trading platform. Um, and we're busy looking at a one minute chart. We'll look at some other charts in a moment. So there is a margin that you put down per contract. So you put down your margin uh, and you need to close the position and you take your profits. Importantly, contracts, they expire. This is the September contract, which is known as the near-term contract. They expire every quarter, March, June, September, and December, and they expire on the third Thursday of every month. So the Aussie contract, these contracts expired last Thursday. That was the third Thursday. And then there's another one that's coming. There are further outdated contracts as well. I'm not interested in them. I want these for liquidity. I want that liquidity. We have had today 12,000 contracts going through on the Aussie. It's about standard. Uh, back in the day, it used to be north of 40,000, but it's, it is what it is. But 12,000 contracts is still a good chunk of liquidity going through. There are also some, some risks. Uh, let's, so we're not going to get a lot of data on this contract uh, because it's quite new. But uh, what I want is a daily chart, and there's not a many days available. So ignore that to the right. This contract wasn't really trading much. You get the, you get the possibility of gaps happening. In other words, we close tonight at 75,000, and we open tomorrow at 76,000 or 74,000. In other words, there's a thousand point move overnight, and you've got no opportunity to exit overnight because this trades 8.30 to 5.30. So there certainly is a chance of gaps. We can see one there from the 18th through to the 19th, uh, a fairly chunky gap from where we closed at call at 73.715 to where we opened 73.997. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's only about a 200-point gap. He has a bigger one down here from the 6th of June. At that point, this wasn't the live contract. There, were, there was a, a, a further outdated. Let me see if I can still pull up the June contract, if we still have data on that. Uh, Aussie June 24. Ah, it's still there. Ah, sweet. Okay, now we can actually see some, some gaps happening. So we can see gaps all over the place. There's gaps back there in April. There's a fairly chunky gap here in May from... Uh, 72,540 down to 71,6. So that was about an eight or 900 point gap. 
A lot of folks then don't hold overnight because, frankly, they are scared of those gaps. I hear what you're saying. My sense is that gaps are going to be swings and roundabouts. Sometimes they're going to hurt you. Sometimes they're not. Uh, they'll be in your favor. But certainly they are real. There's also a strategy, which I've done at times, where you simply trade the gap. If there's a big gap that opens, uh, wait for it to get back into the gap, expect it to close, and to open the position. So say that gap is 800 points, and when the market's got 100 points into it, whether you're going down or up, depending which way, take the position and run with that gap. And certainly I've traded that at points in time. It is, I think, a great product. There are a couple of caveats I want to have here. I'm trading DMA here, Direct Market Access. It means I pay 12 Rand 50 plus VAT per contract to transact, which is as cheap as chips. It also means that I get full, you can see here on the right, this is full market depth. This is everything. I can also go and get a histogram. This is fun. I'm never quite sure. You know, we can see the buyers. Does that tell us that the green monster is winning over the red monster? I also get the, uh, I don't want that chart. I also get the, 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 the last 20 trades coming through. But I get full market depth. So, I mean, there, there's sellers down there at 75,000, which is uh, 2,000 points above where we are right now. Buyers at 69,000, which is fully 4,500 points below where we are right now. It tells me uh, the number of people making up that particular volume. So, there, there's uh, two contracts. Uh, you can see it tells you what the volume is, and that little uh, sign but next to it tells you how many people make up. The, the quantum. You used to be able to see the name of the broker. That was huge fun. That's no longer. You now just get EDM. Essentially, it's the central order book. I want the DMA. There's a lot of folks out there who will offer you uh, top 40 CFDs or other sort of top 40 cash-like products. I'm a big fan of direct market access, of having absolutely the proper real McCoy. This is what every other Aussie trader is seeing on their screen. This is live and happening. If we go to or me. And you can see a lot less volume, a much wider. Yo, that's an absolutely horrendous spread there. A 210 point spread on Omi at this point. Omi, I always used to say Omi is a great place to learn how to trade because it's, it's a real market. Uh, because your margin requirement is sort of six to 10,000, depending where you trade, you can start with a, a 10,000 rand, uh, port, sorry, 20,000 rand portfolio and you can properly do risk management. You can absolutely do proper risk management. The problem is, is that, that, I mean, the volume today is 127 contracts. There used to be, way back in the day, a market maker here. Uh, and and I, I haven't looked at Ormi in some time. I don't know if there still is a market maker, but that is, you know, it should be trading pretty much in sync with what the Aussie is doing. It should be no different. And in fact, there's an opportunity here for someone to make a market. You just hedge into the Aussie, nice and simple, and then you uh, uh, trade the Ormi. Uh, absolutely. Um, but if you want to trade the Omi, have a spend some time watching it. See if there is better liquidity. See if there is a market maker who pops up from time to time. I mean, truthfully, if you wanted to sell to me at 450 points, 20 contracts, I would take them right now. Why? Because I could hit them on the other side. So you can see what someone's done. They've come here and said, yeah, I'll take 20 or me at 450. You lift them and they immediately hedge their position on the other side at 560. Thank you for playing. They've made 110 points on two contracts. Ditto on the sell side at 680 for 10 contracts. But you need a lot better liquidity than that. This is a, a fair bit of a horror show. So you can trade it, but you need to trade it for much longer time frames. But what is the underlying here? Well, it's the top 40 index. Now, importantly, you don't get dividends. Uh, there's an interest component, but it's built into it. So ahead, it will be uh, 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 off the, 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 all the top 40 price. But as you get closer to that expiry, they will narrow. And essentially, you know, an hour before the close, the, 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 the futures close out, they will be trading in sync. Um, it is, as I say, my preferred product to trade. I think it is an, an absolutely great product. The Aussie in of itself, though, is perhaps a dangerous product to start with. I mean, you need to show down sixty to 100,000 just for margin, and then you need to double it for your trading and the like. You know, if you've got 200,000 Rand and you're trading one Aussie contract, even at Standard Bank with your Lex Core at 100,000 margin, you've got 100,000 to play with. Uh, at 10 Rand a point, you've got to lose a lot of points before you bust out. So you've got a lot of space to start getting right and, and, and accurate. Your stops here work very well as well. 
just because of liquidity. So when I'm trading, I trade, I put my stop into the system, it, typically a trailing stop. Uh, so I take a position in the morning, I sell, I buy contracts in bunches of two. I sell one contract at 100 points profit, second contract at 200 points profit, and I've always got a 100 point trailing stop loss. Truthfully, a, a coin flip would probably make you money. As I say, I would be looking and trying to get a sense of not even the chart. I'm just looking at bids and offers, and I'm just looking at who is jumping the spread, who is taking the aggressor here and saying, you know, I will jump the spread because jumping the spread costs you money. If you think that the market is, is, is falling and you're a buyer, well, you can sit on the, on the bid and wait for it to come to you. You know, you can say it's going to, but if you're worried that the market's running away from you, then you need to jump the spread, either to close a position or to open a position because everyone trading here is either going long or short or netting off a long or a short trade. And we don't know which it is. But I'm looking at, at the depth that's coming through. I'm looking at the volumes that are sitting. And then I'm looking at who is jumping the spread. And then I keep on coming back to this chart as well. But I don't really know what it tells me. I, I know what it tells me. I know what the data is. So at this point, it should say that we've got a, a hippo coming for the crocodile and that we should start moving higher. So, uh, you know, last trade, we should start seeing some, 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 yep, and in fact, it is happening. We're seeing a very, very small run. But what we've got here is very little on the buy side. Sorry, on the sell side. Very little on the sell side. Uh, a fair chunk on the buy side. And that says that the sellers are stepping away. The sellers think the market is going higher. So they're like, well, then come buy me up here. Whereas the buyers are all standing tight right at that point. And we can see sometimes it is just, ah, there's a 12 contract down there, uh, about eight points away. There's now a nine that slipped in. But you can see how quickly it is changing. And that is perhaps the key point. This thing moves fast. Uh, it, often going nowhere. I mean, if we look at, if we go back to, what am I doing? It's 20 past four as I'm recording this. So in sort of like the last hour and a half, our trading range has been from 350 uh, down to 450. We've had a 100 point trading range. That's not easy money. But there's a flip side in that earlier today, this thing peaked at 74,300 and change. And now we are about 800 points lower. 800 points. Now, did you short? I mean, big question. But it is, I think, the best thing to trade. I, I don't trade it intraday because I get sucked into it and I've done the trade day trader and it's not a, a particularly huge amount of fun. So broadly, I, I stay away from it from the day trading uh, because then I just don't have a life anymore. And uh, I like having life. Uh, let's quickly check in on some of those stocks. As I said in the intro there, we are waiting for the president to give us a cabinet announcement. Uh, we have been waiting now. Well, he got, he got sworn in a week ago. We are still waiting for that cabinet announcement. The market is a little skittish. Where's the rand? 1823. It's been at 1818. It's been at 1832 today. It's been all over the place. But so there's my Mr. Price, the position I hold. No surprises. We've seen some pullback this week. Uh, and even if we, I mean, if we get a, 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 a cabinet that the market loves, these things are going to run every more. But there's Mr. Price, which I've held since Jan, about 168. Fashini Group, I bought about 10 days ago uh, at about 118, if memory serves. We're seeing some pullback here as well. I think this can come back to that support zone there at around about the 115 sort of level, maybe even as low as 110. Banks remain strong. Nedbank remains my preferred. Nice break on Nedbank. If we just look at the J12, 212, which is the banking index, we are almost back at all-time highs. Or are, no, we are, ah, and now suddenly it won't zoom. We're at, the, we're at or about trading at, we certainly had an intraday all-time high. We are back again. And banks aren't massively expensive. You know, we've got some at 1.4 price to book. We've got some uh, first round at 2. But uh, Nedbank's 1.2, Absis still 0 0.9. There's still, I think, opportunity here. And we're seeing activity all over the place. I mean, we had a look at Spur. Uh, massive pullback on Spur. But, I mean, that really shot the light side. Uh, CMH, which is a little stock I hold, uh, sort of, you know, it's been in a trading range now for how many years? Mm, four years almost. But it's kind of back at the top of that range. So we're still seeing some interest here. And Wayne McCurry made a great point on Stockwatch last week. I'm posting that for 
couple of weeks, and he made the point that there is that the move that we saw in markets wasn't because uh, the, the the GNU. I mean, it, 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 the GNU was the trigger, but the move was because stocks were cheap. SA Inc. is just cheap. There is absolutely no denying that. And that is a key part of what is pushing things higher and, and, and sort of creating the excitement. We just need to see a cabinet from the president. So, yeah, what's the cabinet going to tell us? Has GNU stuck? JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. And uh, we'll leave that there for today. Uh, as always, my name is Simon. We'll be back again next week. I'm going to talk about CrowdStrike. I'm looking for alternatives to AI, and I think that cybersecurity is one of them. So we'll go deep on that. Uh, as always, look after yourself, and if you can, look after somebody else. And remember those events, justonelap.com slash events. There is one this Saturday. There is a discount code that can get you in the door for 20% off. Till next week, cheers all.